Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm a computer programming instructor, and today I'm going to demonstrate passing arrays to functions. So we'll start off by opening Visual Studio. Start a new project. I'm going to store it on my desktop and call it Passing Arrays Demo. And then I'm going to add a new item to the project. And I'm going to add a, a CPP file for main. I'm going to call it passing arrays driver. And then I'm also going to add a header file for my functions. And also a CPP file for my functions. In my driver, I'm going to include IOStream using namespace standard. Put some comments in. And then, uh, so that's the standard things I need for my driver. In my functions file, my header file, I'm going to do something similar. And you'll notice that uh, I'm including namespace standard. And I use uh, these preprocessor directives, if and def checks to see if uh, the function header has been defined before. If it has, it'll skip the definition so we don't define multiple headers. If it hasn't, it'll define uh, functions.h or underscore h. And this is where I'll put my header files. And then for my actual functions, I just need to put them in a file and puts any includes and using statements I need at the top. So in my CPP file, or first I think what I'll do is I'll start with the, the functions. I'm going to define a function for filling an array. And uh, we'll make a void function called fill array so it won't return anything. And we're going to pass in an array called numbers. And the total elements in the array so we know how many are there. And notice with an array, I'm going to use this array and I'm going to pass values back to this array, but I don't have to, for example, put an asterisk for a pointer or an and for a reference. Arrays, by definition, are actually pointers, so they will always be passed by reference to a function. And that kind of makes sense. Arrays can have a lot of information in them, and we don't want to uh, um, pass big giant things by value to a function. So I'm going to have a loop that will loop through each element of my array. And I'm going to make the user of this function pass me in the total elements so I don't have to figure it out somehow. And so there's my loop that's going to loop through th this numbers array. 
and for each element of numbers I want to set it to a random value. Well in order to do random operations I need to include the standard library header file. This will give me the random function and then so then I can use random and I want a number between 1 and 100 so if I want to do that then I'll take the random number take it take the mod of it of 100 and add 1 because if I take mod 100 that'll give me a this alone would give me 0 through 99 I have to add 1 to make it 1 through 100 and you notice I don't have a return because it's a void function and how does how do the values get back to the person that calls us the method that calls us function well this will actually set the uh, array that's actually passed into it because by definition arrays are passed by reference so of course first we need to take our function definition and add it as a function prototype into our header file and now from our driver we can call this array so to really understand what's going on with uh, the passing of the array, first I'm going to define an array. I'm going to call it array from main. And just as an experiment, let's um, see out just this identifier. We won't act, we won't specify a individual element of the array. We'll just say this is the address of array from main and you notice I'm just going to put the identifier for the array without, an, without specifying a particular index. So this is just the identifier. You know, normally if we were going to display an element we would do something like that that would display the first element of the array if I put one that would display the second element of the array because arrays are zero based but now I'm just going to put the name of the array the identifier for the array and see what happens and when I run that what we see is we get a memory address 006AFA78 is a hexadecimal address corresponding to where that array is placed. If I run it again, we notice that the hexadecimal address changed the second time. First it was 006AFA78, now it's 011CFCC8. So each time we run this program, it's going to create this array but it's going to place it in a different different place in memory and if we the identifier itself is actually a pointer to that array so let's use our function to uh, put some values in that array and just so we can see them so what I'm going to do is um, call my function which is this one here which is called fill array and I need the numbers and the total but in order to access it first I need to include functions.h notice that unlike the other includes I use double quotes rather than the angle braces so now I can call fill array and I need to have uh, provide it the array which I'm going to use array from main and notice I just use the identifier and I don't have an and sign and then the total I know it's 15 elements so I'm going to pass it 15, 
for the number of elements. So again, you know, if we were passing this normally as a pointer, we'd put that value, but this actually doesn't work here because pointer to an array is incompatible with parameter type int pointer. And that's because array from main what it's looking for here is a pointer to an array. C++ will automatically basically say I want a pointer to an array. So we fill our array and then now it'd be nice to display it so we'll go for we'll display it with for i for int i equals zero i is less than fifteen plus plus i c out And so we're going to say the element at index i, so 0, 1, 2, 3, through up to 14. And then we'll look at array from main at i, and then put in an end of line or carriage return. So this loop should loop through the array and display each element that's in the array. So if fill from array worked, If this fill away worked, we'll see values in here. Otherwise, we'll see some gibberish. So let's run it. And in fact, what we see is each of the elements displays a value. Let's run it again and compare the results side by side. Notice that each time it ran, it placed the array in a different spot, but the sequence is identical. Each time it picked the same random numbers. So that's not very random. The numbers are, that's why we call it a pseudo random sequence, because the numbers run through an algorithm and pick um, different numbers one time to the next, but each time you run that sequence it's going to be the same sequence and we can tell there it's run twice because the array here has different addresses and it was placed in different locations so one of the things we could do is we could include standard library here and maybe we could seed the random number generator and so at the top I'm going to seed this random number and we do that with the srand function and I'm just going to put a any old number in here 321 so here we're we're We've included the standard library and we've seeded the random number. Let's see what happens now. Well, this is a different sequence than the last time we ran it, but if I run it again, although the sequence is different than when I hadn't seeded the number, we can still see each time it runs, it's still displaying the same sequence of random numbers. So we can, whatever we change this to, we'll change the, uh, the which sequence of random numbers, but if we have the same seed each time, it's going to be the same sequence of random numbers. So what we need to do is in fact uh, include another library 
include time and then seed it with time and null. The time function will look at the uh, current system time, which is a number of seconds from 1 January 1970 typically. And if we put the passive value null into time, it will give us the same value each time. I mean, it will it'll give us a, the system clock time, essentially. So by seeing it with random, let's see what happens now when we run it twice. So we've seeded it with the time, and this is our first run. This is our second run. And what we can see is our arrays were declared in different locations each for each run of the program. And each and now we can see that the sequence is different. And the reason why it's different is because we seeded it with the system time. And since the system time changes, uh, continuously at such a high rate and since the probability that someone starts two instances of the program running at exactly the same time is pretty remote this will cause our pseudo random number sequence to behave much more like a, a, a truly random sequence so the next thing we want to do is we've got this array we've passed it to fill array we didn't have to use the address operator it actually can't work with that we notice we get a red we get an error if we do that we just when we pass arrays we just need to pass the identifier name of the array to the function that's working with it and our first function basically just filled that array let's make another function that sums the elements of the array and we'll have it return an int and we'll call it we'll make it uh, we'll call it sum array and we'll have our int numbers coming in notice we don't have to use an asterisk to show that it's a pointer because C++ knows the an array is a pointer and then we want the total number, we want the user of this function to give us the total number so we don't have to figure it out. And similar to what we did before, what we're going to do is sum these numbers. So I'm going to start off by declaring an integer called sum and set it equal to zero to initialize it. And then each time it this loop picks up a one number of the array, I'm just going to say sum is plus equal to numbers of i. So each, what this will do is it'll accumulate the sum of all the values. So this plus equals is, is equal to saying sum plus numbers. But just to make it shorter, we can just say plus equals, and that means the same thing. And what this will do is it'll, it'll keep adding each element of the array to sum, and eventually sum will be the sum of all the numbers. And then what we'll do is return sum. I'm going to take my function definition, add it to my header file, save that, and then go to drivers.cpp, and I'll declare an int called uh, array sum and set it equal to my new function sum array and I need to pass it the array. Again, I don't have to use the address of operator because C++ knows an array is a pointer so I just need to pass my array, which is array from main, the number of elements because that's how I define my function. And then I need to display this. So to display it I'll just see out I'll put an end line in order to kind of space this out a little bit. So 
So now I'm going to display the sum of all the elements in the array. We'll run it. And we see there's all our elements on the array. Uh, we seem to have a little bit of an error. Let's make this smaller just to see what happens. Oh, I put 115 elements. It's actually going past the uh, number of elements and is actually grabbing information that doesn't, it's not in the array. This needs to be 15. Try it again. And now we have a more reasonable result. And that brings up an important point with uh, C++. There is no controls over arrays, so or the index is on arrays. So if you go past the actual defined elements in the array, it'll happily go through and grab whatever memory item it finds beyond the end of the array. So that completes my demonstration. Thank you very much.